there's uh, some slight news going on in the jiu-jitsu community that's unfortunately making it so that most people can't actually get into the gym and are needing to practice social distancing, but still wanting to get some fundamental jiu-jitsu stuff going. So I actually compiled a list of things that you can do on your own with a fairly small amount of space and still develop some of those fundamental skills and hopefully you won't be too far behind the curve when gyms open back up and we can continue to do the sport that we love. So the first thing, very, very classic. We're just gonna do our basic shrimping motion. So we're gonna start with our back flat towards the mat. I'm gonna think about turning to one side, the other, doesn't matter which. Whatever side you turn to, the leg is gonna flatten down on the ground on that same side. I'm gonna rotate through. The top hand goes down towards the bottom hip to hide it. Those are for the gee guys who really like to attack the kimuras and the ramas. Then your bottom hand is gonna go through here, and you're trying to grip onto their shin. I just want you to think about bringing your butt up to the line of your shoulder. So I raise my hips up, bring the butt back towards my shoulder, I reach it back in the middle, I can go over to the other side. In this case, we'll roll to my left shoulder, put my left foot down, and I'll roll over, hide my top hand here, my bottom hand braces up against their shin. I'm gonna bridge up and shorten my butt back up towards the level of my shoulder. I reset. The reason why it's so important to make as much space as you can when you're doing this movement is so that you can create the space that you need to get out from underneath somebody. So keep in mind the context for which we're doing this. I'll use my handy prop here to sub in for Nuki. The reason why we're doing this is imagine there's somebody on top of you, like so, you know, maybe they're raining down punches if it's MMA, self-defense, or maybe this is just jujitsu, they're trying to hold on and keep you underneath them. It's critically important that the more space that you create here, the easier it's going to be to be able to get your legs and your lower limbs out from underneath them. If you have a decent amount of space to be able to work with, and you got nice mats, sharpening is a great thing to do from one end to the other, so I'll just demonstrate here. But let's say you don't have a whole lot of room to work with. So in that case, you can actually just shrimp in place. So we'll do the same movement, but rather than trying to over-exaggerate, bringing my butt up to the level of my shoulders and then continuing in this direction, we're just gonna reset back. So I'm here. Right back in the same spot. Right back in the same spot. Like so. It's all dependent on how much room you have, but I would highly encourage you, if you have the space, to extend out as far as you can. But if you don't, you know, you work with what you gotta work with. Now the other variation <coughs> of shrimping that is critically important for you to be able to work on, whether you're in the gym or outside, is reverse shrimping. The way that I like to teach this is to tell people to imagine that they're digging their hands into the dirt and shoving it up and over their shoulder. So, I'm here, I lay flat on the ground like so. I'm gonna pick a side, in this case, I'll do my left, it'll be your right. I'm gonna lean over to the side, I'm gonna dig up that dirt like so. I'm gonna shove it up and over my shoulder, and as I'm doing that, I take my bottom heels, I drag myself towards the camera. So I'm here, I lean over, through, pull, and reset, I can do it on the other side. You know, leaning over to my shoulder, digging the dirt, pulling my heels up as I throw the dirt up and over my shoulder. I reset. Again, keep in mind the context of why it is that you're doing this. You're trying to get out from underneath somebody and try to eject them up on off at you. The next one that you can work on is your forward roll. Again, if you have the space to be able to work, go quite a distance, then I would encourage you to. If you don't, I'll show you a variation where you can use much more minimal amount of space. So with a forward roll, a very common mistake that people make is you just try to roll over their neck, 
ice out and land however they land. It is really important that you be careful when you're doing these movements, even during your warm up, so that you don't end up putting too much spine on your neck. You're going to need that long after you're done doing jujitsu and all the other fun stuff. So, the way that I prefer to teach this roll, I want you to think about taking your hand, and you're going to be rolling it over this arm, this shoulder, cupping your ear to the shoulder like so. So, you can make a nice round ramp to roll off of. So rather than rolling straight, I'm kind of rolling at a slight angle. So I'm here, I take my hand, whichever one I decide to use, I think about diving, I bring my ear to the shoulder on that same side, and then I roll over. Again here, I pick my hand, make motion like I'm diving, I bring my ear to the shoulder on that same side, and then I roll. As you start to feel a little bit more comfortable with it, you can go back and forth, back and forth. <coughs> Dive. Like so. And through. Depending on how much space you have, you may need to shorten that up. So, I'm just going to do this motion within this square portion of the mat. I'm just going to start in the end. I'm going to... So, I'm just going to start in the end and slow my movements up and try to use the most efficient amount of space that I can. So I'm here. This is a great time to talk about a reverse roll. So again, a common mistake that people make when they're doing these rolls is they try to roll over their neck. Uh, I don't know about you, but from years of getting stacked and people grabbing collar ties on my neck, it's actually has quite a bit of discomfort. So I would highly recommend you think about doing the exact same thing in reverse. So again, rather than rolling directly over your neck, I'm just gonna pick a side. I'm gonna glue my ear to the shoulder on that same side. I'm gonna rotate over that ramp. So I'm right here, glue the ear, I roll. And as you can see, I'm not rolling over my neck, I'm rolling over my shoulder. And look. Again, if you're lacking for space, so it's totally understandable, I'm just gonna make my movements even more efficient. So I start with my knees flat like so. I glue, I pop my legs through, I rotate like so. And using a much smaller amount of space, all things considered. A slight variation of the forward roll that is actually really useful as part of the uh, Enter the System series by John Danaher. So that's the forward and backward roll in place. So what I want you to think about is, you know, starting on your knees like so, you're gonna pick a direction to start to roll. And as you land, I just want you to land flat like so. And only using your core strength, what I want you to think about is being able to lift yourself back up in the opposite direction. So again, here, I can't my head in one way or the other Think about trying to glue my ear to my shoulder. And come up, back and round. Like so. I'm gonna be flat, kind of like a starfish, or kind of like I'm making a snow angel. And from here, using only my core strength, I'm gonna rotate through. Extend back up. Now, once you feel comfortable with just doing the forward and backward motion, it's a great time to think about Trying to cut your angles. So, I'm going to start flat like so. I'll come up, and rather than going directly backwards, I'll just get a slight angle so that I land at 90 degrees. Again, from here, using only my core strength, I'll come through here. In this case, I'll pop back towards the camera. Landing through what? Like I'm making a snuff angle. 